Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through a numerical example in Excel that will show you how you can figure out the net present value of a project when you have the option to abandon the project and also when you have the option to expand the project or the investment, especially if the project has shown some success. And in the process, I will also show you how you can quantify the value of these options to abandon and expand the investment. All right, let's go. So suppose you're considering investing in a new project and you expect to sell 5,700 units per year at $71 net cash flow a piece for the next 10 years. So this is not sales, this is cash flow, which accounts for all sales, operating costs, investments in networking capital, so on and so forth. Now, you're also told that the relevant discount rate is 15% and the initial investment that is required today is about $1.68 million. And after the first year, the project can also be dismantled and sold for $1.5 million. Okay, so this tells you that there is the option to abandon the investment after one year. This is an option, not an obligation, which means that you would only want to abandon if it makes monetary sense. Now suppose you think that it is likely that expected sales will be revised upwards to 8700 units if the first year is a success and revised downwards to 4300 units if the first year is not a success or it's a failure. Okay so at the end of the first year the project will either be successful which means that for the next nine years you'll be able to sell 8700 units or it will be a failure in which case you can only sell 4,300 units for the next nine years. Now, furthermore, suppose that the scale of the project can be doubled. So this is where we're talking about the potential to expand the project. So it says the project can be doubled in one year in the sense that twice as many units can be produced and sold. What that means is that if after the first year that the project is a success, and you know that you can sell 8,700 units, you're thinking, why not double this scale and sell twice as much, specifically 17,400 units, which is double 8,700. Obviously, this would only make sense if the project has been a success, right? You wouldn't want to double down on the project if it is a failure, right? In fact, if anything, in that case, you would want to consider whether you want to continue with the project or whether you want to abandon it. So we'll have to see which makes sense and when. So now the question is, if success and failure are equally likely, what is the expected net present value of the project? How much is the project worth today? And then secondly, what is the value of the option to abandon the project? And then what is the value of the option to expand? So here what I've done is that I've written down all the inputs that are given to us. And so now I'm going to do a few calculations. First, let's calculate the cash flows that we are going to get at the end of year one. Now that is a rather simple calculation. We are here at time period zero and we know that in one year we'll be able to sell 5,700 units at a net cash flow per unit of 71. So the cash flow that we're going to get at the end of year one is simply $404,700. Now one year is gone, so only nine years remain. Now you're probably wondering why am I specifically looking at year one cash flows? Well, because at the end of year one, I am going to find out if my project has been a success or a failure. If it has been a success, this means that now for the next nine years, I can sell 8,700 units per year at a net cash flow of $71 per unit. Now, how much cash flow I get for the next nine years depends on whether I expand on my success or whether I don't expand on my success. If I do expand on my success, this means that as soon as I realize at the end of the first year that I can sell 8,700 units because the project has been successful, I'll say to myself, hmm, why not double down on this and sell twice as much? So this means that for the next nine years, I'll be able to sell 8,700 times two, and then the revenue that I will get will be, well, all this multiplied by 71. So $1.235 million approximately for the next nine years. So if somebody asks me, what is the present value of all the cash flows that I'm going to get at the end of year one? At the end of year one, over the next nine years, 
and say, huh, that's a simple calculation. It's equal to present value. The rate at which I'm going to discount them is 15%. The number of time periods is nine. And the payment that I'm getting is this $1.235 million approximately. I'm entering this with a negative so I can get a positive number. So $5.894 million approximately. Now, if I were not able to expand on my success, then that means that I would not have been able to double down on this 8,700, which means that in that case, the only thing that I could get is 8,700 times 71 for the next nine years. And therefore the present value of all the cash flows that I would get from the success of this project without me being able to expand on it is simply equal to me discounting at 15% for the next nine years, the product of 8,700 and 71. So obviously the present value is gonna be far less. It's gonna be 2.947 million dollars approximately. Now, let's similarly evaluate failure. If the project fails, this means that for the next nine years, I can only sell 4,300 units at a net cash flow of $71. Now, let's suppose that I am unable to abandon my investment. In that case, I will be forced to sell 4,300 units per year at a net cash flow of 71 for nine years. And the present value of the cash flows that I will get will be me discounting at 15% for nine years, the product of 4,371. So $1.456 million approximately. Note that if, on the other hand, I'm able to abandon my investment, I know that dismantling the project yields me a cash flow of $1.5 million. So with these calculations, I can actually do some other calculations to figure out what is the net present value of the project going to be under different situations. And so I've done these calculations over here. Let me walk you through them. So first, let's suppose that the project was such that it gave you no options. In other words, there was no option to expand and there was no option to abandon the investment. This means that at the end of year one, you would get this 404,700 regardless. And then if the project were a success, then you would get this payoff, which is the payoff or the present value of all the cash flows that you get without you being able to expand, because remember, you don't have that option or the project could have been a failure and you would have gotten this $1.456 million worth of a payoff. And so the expected cash flows, including present values basically, at the end of year one would simply be equal to 0.5, which is the probability 50% times this number, and then 50% times this number, and then plus this 404,000, which is cell J13 that I get regardless, so this is all the payoff that I get in the end of year one. And so now if I'm here at time period zero thinking, huh, is this investment worthwhile? Basically, I'm looking at a payoff one year from now of 2.606. I need to discount that at my discount rate of 15%. So notice I'm discounting this number right here, which is in cell P14 back one year. And at time period zero, I also have to make this initial investment of $1.68 million. And so I'm going to net that out from this present value. And so that gives me my present value of the project, which is about $586,000. Now suppose that you had the option to abandon. Well, in that case, at the end of year one, if the project is a success, then nothing changes for you right? Because you still don't have the option to expand on your success. So you can still get this. However, if the project fails, you can probably see that in this case, you would rather abandon because the payoff that you're getting from abandoning the investment is higher. In fact, in this case, in order to calculate the expected cash flows, I'm saying, look, take 50% of this number, but then 50% of the maximum of these two numbers, which of course, in this case is going to be 1.5. The rest of the calculations work just as before. You discount this big number back one year at your discount rate, net out the initial investment of 1.68. Naturally, the NPV of your project is now going to be higher. Why? Because you're able to abandon at a higher number in the event of failure. 
And if somebody asks you, what was the value of this option to abandon the investment? The way you can quantify this is you can say, well, my net present value when I abandon the investment is 605,000. Without that option, the project is only worth 586. So the difference between these NPVs is in a way telling me how valuable this option to abandon is, which in this case is about $19,000. Put differently, if somebody came to you and says, I can give you this option to abandon the project at the end of year one for $10,000, would you make that purchase? The answer actually is yes, because the worth of that option to abandon in this case to you is about $19,000. Would you pay $10,000 to get something that is worth $19,000? I hope so. We can similarly evaluate this investment when you have both the option to abandon and expand. In that case, as you can probably guess now, if the project is successful, you would want to have this payoff rather than this payoff. And so I'm doing 50% of the max of these two numbers, which of course, in this case is 5.89. However, one minus 50% into the max of these because I want to see which of these two options give me a higher payoff, abandoning versus non-abandoning. And then of course I get this 404,700 in the first year regardless. The rest of the calculations work just the same. The net present value is me discounting all of this back one year, netting out the initial investment. And so if somebody asks you, what is the value of the option to abandon and expand? You can compare this high NPV number with the baseline when you had no options. And uh, yeah, having those options is quite valuable in this case. In fact, they drive most of the value project in this case. So there you go, a comprehensive example in Excel to show you how you can figure out the worth of an investment when you have the option to abandon and expand the investment and also to quantify the worth of these options. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.